Hey everybody, Dr. Schultz from the Centennial Schultz Clinic. Today we're going to be talking about biceps femoris tendonitis. So thank you for checking in and let's get started. So the goals of this short presentation are as follows. We're going to learn about the biceps femoris. We're going to explain tendonitis and what in the world is biceps femoris tendonitis. Its causes, its symptoms, what are the traditional treatment options for biceps femoris tendonitis? And then some really new, exciting regenerative options, which include PRP and stem cells. So let's get started. What in the world is this biceps femoris? That's just a mouthful. Well, actually, it's a muscle in the back of your thigh, and it composes your hamstring. And let's illustrate here. So. Your hamstring is made up of three muscles, which are illustrated here to the right. This is the, your low back here, um, your sacrum, and then this is what's called the sits bone right here. And you can see that the actual uh, biceps femoris starts at the sits bone and it goes all the way down to the outside of your leg. Now again, the biceps femoris is one of three muscles that comprise your hamstring. And again, it starts from the sits bone and can go all the way down to the outside of your knee. So what is tendonitis? Tendonitis is simply an inflammation of the tendon. And tendons, as you recall, are basically dense, thick connective tissues that connect a muscle to the bone. So what exactly then is biceps femoris tendonitis? It's simply an inflammation of the tendon. The specific tendon here is the biceps femoris. So biceps femoris tendonitis is simply an inflammation of the biceps femoris tendon. It's a very common sports injury, particularly in those athletes that play soccer, football, and runners. So what are the causes of biceps femoris tendonitis? Improper training, typically trying to get up mileage or speed too quick, or a condensed schedule, trying to get up to speed. Also, prolonged sitting. Gee, during COVID and, and this uh, last year, I know a lot of us have been sitting, and that can cause that pain right in the back of your leg. Overuse, increased weight. Metabolic conditions, uh, including diabetes, and you know the antibiotic that you get from your doctor? That actually may be contributing to a tendonitis, particularly ciprofloxin. And then low back nerve irritation. Yes, I know, you may not even have low back pain, but irritation of the low back nerves can actually cause and make worse a tendonitis in the hamstring, and in particular, the biceps femoris. And then there's a joint called the sacroiliac joint. And when that's injured, it can actually aggravate or cause biceps femoris tendonitis. So what are the symptoms? It's basically localized pain in the back of your leg. And it can be right up here, and it also can be on the outside of your leg. Because again, remember, the biceps femoris comes all the way down. And there's a tendon that inserts onto the bone up here, which is the sits bone, and the bone down here, which is the outside of your shin bone, otherwise known as the fibula. As a result of this tendonitis, you can actually have some muscle tightness and swelling. And all too often, you actually have restriction in the back of the leg and or the knee. As you can see depicted here, it can be quite aggravating, and if severe, stop you in your tracks. So what are the traditional treatments for biceps femoris tendonitis? Conservative therapy should always be first-line therapy when appropriate. And what that would include is rest, stretching, safe non-steroidal, I mean, safe uh, anti-inflammatory medications. And that does not mean Motrin and Dolabid. What that means is turmeric, a good quality fish oil. Chiropractic care, physical therapy, heat and ice are all indicated. Again, 
conservative therapy should always be first line. Regrettably, not everyone responds to this, and many patients are referred for steroid injections. Now, steroids are very effective anti-inflammatory agents, but they have significant downsides. They can actually cause damage to the tendon itself, and they've been demonstrated to uh, uh, actually be toxic to cartilage. So you really want to stay away from steroid injections. Well, in 2021, there are lots of new treatment options for biceps femoris tendonitis, which include PRP, otherwise known as platelet-rich plasma, also stem cells. Now, both of these have the potential of significantly uh, promoting healing, increasing blood flow, decreasing inflammation. A tendon inherently does not have great blood flow. So PRP and stem cells can both increase the amount of blood flow to that area and doing so promote healing and getting you back to normal living. So at the Centennial Schultz Clinic, we were the first clinic in the world back in 2005 to utilize stem cells on the lower back. We have an extensive amount of uh, clinical expertise in this, and these are the pearls I wanna share with you in regards to the treatment of biceps femoris tendonitis and regenerative therapies. So the indications for stem cell are those patients that either have a partial thickness tear or have not responded to PRP. PRP, for the majority of the cases of just tendonitis, will be sufficient to successfully treat it. The other thing you want to know is, who in the world is performing your injections? At the Centennial Schultz Clinic, we all only have board-certified, fellowship-trained physicians. That is the gold standard, and I would implore you to do the same. You want to know who is doing your injection and that they have spent basically a lifetime knowing and learning about this area. What in the world is being injected? Where are they getting the injection? PRP comes from your arm. It's then um, spun down and concentrated. But in terms of stem cells, there are many different stem cell sources out there. The two major ones are coming from bone marrow, and the second one is from fat. Beware of these birth tissue, quote, stem cells. They have no living cells, so be wary anyone who is trying to sell you that. How is it being injected? Precision is absolutely critical for the best clinical outcome. A blind injection or an injection just going like this does never work. What you need to have is an ultrasound guided injection that allows for precise injection of the platelets or the stem cell into the affected area. And then preparation is absolutely paramount that you're off any anti-inflammatory medicines two weeks prior, as well as uh, steroids and uh, blood thinners. So why in the world should you care about a hamstring injury? This can cause significant downtime. And most importantly, there's a very high rate of recurrence. Said another way, if you don't treat the hamstring problem uh, correctly and effectively the first time, that's gonna come back and haunt you, which means more pain and more downtime. So it's incumbent upon you to get it treated correctly with guidance, with the right medication, either stem cell or uh, PRP. If it's not treated, what can happen is the inflammation in the tendon can actually progress to a tear in the tendon. And then if that's not effectively treated, that tendon can actually rip off. That's right, just be pulled off the bone where it attaches. And that leaves very little options except for surgery. You don't want to box yourself into a corner. So what's the next step? Schedule an evaluation. Give us a call, go onto our website. You can have a telemedicine uh, evaluation from your chalet or your beachfront condo. Or you can actually come into our office. We have two locations, one in Broomfield, Colorado, and one in Lone Tree, Southern, Southern uh, Metropolitan Denver. Have a diagnostic ultrasound 
and learn about what's going on. Don't rely upon someone's judgment or physical examination. Actually get a picture of what's going on and how we can help you. Get the best treatment options for you. Do this so you the tendonitis does not progress to a tendon tear or even worse what's called an avulsion where it's torn off. Act today. You know, you don't need to live with this and you want you want to get it treated appropriately. I hope this helped. So we're here in the Denver metropolitan Boulder area. These are the flat irons. There's so many things to do, but most importantly, act today. If this was helpful, please share it with a family member, a friend, anyone that's had com uh, recurrent hamstring problems that continues to suffer. Please subscribe. I hope you found this helpful. Thanks so much. Till next time.